Hello again. Let me now explain this program that I have already compiled and executed this with NetBeans and code blocks earlier in this section. As a novice programmer or a startup programmer, you need to understand this program carefully so that you can go ahead and learn the more complex syntax in C. But the basic understanding starts from this program. Although the purpose of this program is pretty simple, it's going to print hello world into the output console. But the conception of writing program begins from here. First of all, what you need to know is that we write programs in modular approach. That means we divide the problem in smaller fragments and then we try to solve each individual fragment separately and then we integrate the whole thing for achieving the ultimate goal. So that's the modular approach in our programming and that we will be discussing in our function writing section as well in great detail. So here you need to understand one more thing that this program is practically executed by the operating system. When we write a C code, we compile the C code and then we submit it to the operating system and the operating system, be it Windows or Mac or Linux that executes our C code. Now, whatever the operating system that you are using for execution, the operating system doesn't understand what is your source code. So for that reason, we need to translate our source code into operating system understandable format. And for that, there is a program that's the compiler program is going to help us to compile our source code to the corresponding object code. Once the compiler compiles our source code to the object code, then we are ready to execute the object code. Any number of time that you want, you can execute the object code once it is compiled. But the fact is that when the operating system starts execution, it needs to know exactly from where it should start the execution. As I have already told you that our program may contain several functions or modules. A module is called typically a function in C program. So our program may contain several functions in order to solve a problem. We may write more than one function in our program. So the, if the program contains many function, then operating system needs to know exactly from which point it should start the execution. Because um, if we are writing program, program consisting of logical steps and they are written using the instructions with a particular syntax as we will be using C and logical steps must have a predefined start point. So here in C program, this main function is considered as the starting point of any C program. A function is identified by the compiler using um, by Noticing this opening first bracket and closing first bracket, you can see that there is an opening first bracket and closing first bracket postfixed with this main. That identifies main as a function. If we write our own function, then also we will be writing that opening first bracket and closing first bracket after writing the name of our function. So in this program, we have only one function and that is the main function. An operating system identifies this main function as the start point. So if we have more than one function, it will always find the main function as uh, the startup function and it will start from the first instruction of the main function to start the program or to start the execution of the program. So here is the printf statement as the first instruction within the main function that we have written. And the purpose of the printf is to print something into the output console, whatever we supply as parameter. Now printf is also a function that we are using here in order to print this string hello world into the output console. But the fact is that we have never written print by ourselves. It's actually there in the library of the language. There are thousands of functions, such functions in the library, if not more. And we can use those functions for our purpose. We do not need to write these functions. These are general purpose functions that are already written in the library and supplied to us and we can take the benefit of these functions just by calling them as I am calling the printf function and passing what I need to print and the code is written there in the printf function and that is uh, doing the needful to print this hello world into the output console. So there are thousands of functions as I have told you if not more and we can use these library functions in our program. 
Now, when the compiler starts compilation of this program, compiler starts compilation from the very first line of the program. So it will start from this line. So it will come ignore this section because this is the commenting section. I will be telling you about this very soon after explaining these header files. Okay, and then the compiler comes here. And please remember, I am coming again that the program starts from main. When the operating system starts execution of our program, then it starts from main. But when the compiler translates our program, it starts from the first line of the program. You may compile the program today and you may execute the program anytime later on in future and as many times as you need, you can execute. So when the execution takes place, it's from the main. But when the compilation takes place, it's from the first line. So when the compiler comes at this line, then the compiler doesn't understand what printf is. Now please remember also that compiler doesn't compile or translate anything that is unknown to the compiler. Now I have already told you that printf is a library function and the library is not part of the language compiler. Compiler only contains the keywords which are special purpose words such as this one int and this one return. They have predefined purpose and their definition are given within the compiler. Compiler also understands the operator that we use to operate on data such as plus, minus, multiplication, division and modulus operator and all these are operators and there are many actually. Okay, so compiler understands what keywords are, what's the meaning of them and what are the meaning of these operator. But compiler doesn't understand what is this function printf because that's not within the compiler. That's given separately although it comes with the compiler but it's in a different folder that is it is kept. So compiler refuses to compile printf here and in order to resolve this situation we need to provide enough hints to the compiler so that the compiler identifies this printf and makes the call successful and writes the necessary instructions here so that the operating system can call this function in runtime. For that purpose we use these header files. Now you have noticed that I have used hash include stdio.h within the angle brackets here. Now the purpose of this header file is to provide the hints to the compiler about the unknown identifiers in the program. Identifiers means it's the resource. It could be a variable or a function name. That's an identifier. We call it identifier in general. Later on, you will get to know that we can declare a variable in order to hold data. So that variable is also an identifier. This name of the function is also an identifier. So compiler refuses to identify any identifier if it's not defined or declared. Since printf is a library function, the declaration of printf is required in order to compile this. Otherwise, compiler will flag error. And the declaration or the identification or sometimes it is said as the signature of the function is basically given here in this file and that's called the header file with extension .h. There are many header files and each of these header file contains the declaration or the signature. Uh, you will get to know what exactly the declaration of signature is when I will discuss function later on in this tutorial. That will be clear at that point. So for this time you can just consider that declaration is some sort of identification uh, that identifies the function with its name and the type of the parameter that it receives and what it returns on completion. So all the necessary things about the function contained in the declaration. And that is given here in the stdio.h header. And there are many headers. Um, each contains the declaration of some of the library functions. They, these functions are categorically on the basis of their nature of job is, is declared in different header files. stdio.h is actually the header file that contains the declaration of library functions which are involved for standard input output operations. So printf is an in standard output operation. You will get to know that there is a function scanf that's for input purpose. So there are many others actually. So all the functions which are involved for uh, input and output operation are declared there in stdio.h. If you need a function to calculate the sign of a value, then you need to include 
math.h so that you can call the sine function to calculate the sine of a value. If you need to get a to the power b, then you can just call the pal function. That's again there in the math.h header. The declaration is there in math.h header. So you can include that in your program. So otherwise the compiler is going to show error. So appropriate header files are to be uh, has to be included with the program. And now here we have this statement return exit underscore success. Now this exit underscore success is a macro. Macro means it's a it's a name that is substituted by the by a value by the compiler. So exit underscore success is actually defined in this header stdlib.h that contains a declaration uh, of this exit underscore success macro and where it is defined with a value zero that means instead of writing exit underscore success you could have written something like this say say zero here you could have written zero directly in that case it's okay writing return zero there and we can omit this stdlib.h inclusion here anything that starts with hash is considered as the instruction to the compiler here this is actually called the preprocessor directives the preprocessor directives are instructions to the compiler that means this include command is for the compiler that we are telling using this operator hash so if the compiler finds that anything starting with hash it understands that it's for the compiler so the include command tells the compiler to include this file with your programs. So what the compiler does, it literally copy and paste the content of this file with your source code and then it starts compilation. And so that file contains the declaration of printf so it gets to know what printf is. So when it comes here, it compiles printf uh, without showing any, any error. So that's why we use this hash include. Uh, in order to resolve the function call or the identity of the function that's necessary so main is the starting function that must be there if you want to execute your program and if you want to execute your program there should be only one main exactly one main you cannot have two main because that's a uh, illegal thing we cannot start a program from from two points please remember we should have only one entry point and only one defined exit point for any program for any program whichever the language you are using so this is actually the header file that we need to include for this function and we are returning zero to the operating system and because when the operating system calls our function we are returning back an integer value to the operating system uh, to ensure to tell operating system that our program uh, ends successfully there may be occasion when you would like to return some different value in order to tell the operating system that your program uh, terminated unsuccessfully or did something wrong or went on went with something wrong it crashed in that case the calling environment operating system or any batch program um, will understand that your program failed so that's necessary so that the caller could understand your program ended successfully or not so that's why we should return uh, a value integer value to the caller and we are actually uh, doing a promise here to the operating system by writing int here we are we are we are making a promise to the operating system that on completion of the function main the main function is going to return an integer back to the operating system so i'll be telling details about this this is called typically this is typically called return type of a function that actually is the type of data that is returned by the function to the caller on completion you can see that on completion we are returning 0 0 is an int type or int type in c so we are returning we are writing int here now let us talk about the comments anything that you write within slash star and star slash is ignored by the compiler these are called the comments we, it's it's necessary to write comments in our program that makes our program more readable more comprehensive to the other per person who are reviewing our program it's quite possible that 
you are writing a program today with some complex logic you have you developed the program program successfully but after a couple of months you need to redevelop the program uh, you need to change some logic and it's quite possible that you will forget what you did earlier so it's a good suggestion always to write comments side by side with your program and they will be ignored by the compiler here you can see that the id already has written the name of the file the author and the creation date and time that will help to identify when i created this file and who is the owner of this file similarly you can write something like this here say i'm writing you may have noticed that i have used double front slash here instead of slash star star slash i could have used that as well but typically slash star star slash is a multi-line commenting style that means anything any number of lines that comes within slash star and star slash will be considered as comment you can see that we have more than one lines here within slash star and star slash um, but there is another style that is double front slash and that is actually a single line commenting style here line that comes after double front slash will be considered as comment that means this is the comment in this case so hope you have understood the initial thing with this program and we will proceed with the other syntax with the next tutorial uh, with the next section of the tutorials hope you enjoy this learning session with me thank you very much